Last night on MasterChef Australia. So today, one of you is going home. Poe, Jeannie and Andre faced off in the pressure test. Jenny, I'm sorry to say you're out. Tonight, celebrity chef Matt Moran steps up to the hot plate. You wouldn't be standing here if we didn't think you had what it takes to take Matt Moran down. Bring it on, buddy. It's Justine's second attempt to beat a pro. I'm really proud that I can do this again. Will she get fast-tracked to the last week of the competition? It's going to be a tough one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this dish up in time. Justine, I'm going to give you encouragement. Hurry up. Today is Celebrity Chef Challenge. I won the invention test, so I get to cook off against a professional chef. I reckon the word must be getting around that two chefs have been beaten now, so, you know, I think they'll be taking it really seriously. Friggin' big guns. Yeah. As I put my chef jacket on this morning, I'm really proud that I can do this again. Maybe this is my chance to go straight to the finals, who knows? I'm a little bit nervous. I know it's gonna be a massive day. A lot is riding on today. At this stage of the competition, winning Celebrity Challenge is very important to me. Josie walks into the kitchen. She looks beautiful. She looks like she belongs in a chef jacket. Now, you've been here before, haven't you, Justine? Just two weeks ago, you cooked off against Italian chef Guy Grossi. You lost to him by just one point. Justine. You know that you could achieve this. You could be like Lucas. Eight. You could be like Julia, out there working and training, outside of the MasterChef kitchen, waiting to come back in that final week. It's a real possibility. You're about to battle it out with one of the most awarded chefs in this country. The two of you will cook the same dish, and the judges will taste your efforts and give them a score out of 10. If you score higher than our celebrity chef, then you'll be awarded with a free ride through to the final week of MasterChef Australia. You are one of our top cooks in this competition right now. If there's any words of advice, you need to multitask today. Everything you do needs to be precise. Well, Justine, it's time to find out who your competition will be. His Sydney restaurant, Aria, has been awarded a two chef hat status, not once, but eight times. He is Chef Matt Moran. Yeah. No mistaking who that is. Uh, we all know Matt Moran is the executive chef at Aria Restaurant. Yeah, Matt Moran's just hardcore. Everyone rates him as a bit of a superstar chef and, you know, he's a heavyweight in the chefing world. I've seen his face on cooking shows, I've seen his books, I know about his restaurants. You know, he's an Australian icon in the chef world. I'm Matt Moran, chef and owner of Aria Restaurant. Aria Restaurant is a fine dining restaurant and it's been here for 10 years now. What it takes to succeed in this industry is a lot of hard work and a lot of love. If you don't love it, don't do it. Matt, welcome to the MasterChef Kitchen. Pleasure to be here. You today will be cooking off against Justine. Now, Justine, you'll be cooking one of the dishes from the current menu at Aria. Matt will give you a copy of the recipe. He'll allow you to taste the dish, and he'll give you a 15-minute head start. I thought I was going to get half an hour. You wouldn't be standing here if we didn't think you had what it takes to take Matt Moran down. OK? <laughs> Now remember, we won't know who's cooked which dish until we've tasted and written down our scores. Gentlemen. Well, it's time for Matt to reveal what you'll both be cooking. I automatically think, hopefully it's a main, hopefully it's meat. 
Please don't give me dessert. The dish is a dessert. <laughs> there we have our pear tart, poached pear, caramel sauce, a little bit of crumble and some double cream. Matt, why did you choose this dish? It's just a sort of a dish which has got lots of different components to it and lots of different dishes in that dish. What's the most difficult part? The main part is the tart and that's what's going to go wrong. You've got to get that nice caramelisation on it. Um, you've got to make sure that the pastry is cooked underneath, otherwise it becomes really soft and you need that crispness. Make sure your pear is cooked enough. Don't overcook it because it becomes mush. Justine, would you like to taste? Absolutely. Okay. It was divine. It almost tastes like a ta, -ta, ta Got this texture that almost changes when you go to the crumble and the cream. It's two different layers, smooth and crunchy. It's art on a dish. You will have a 15-minute head start. In total, you'll have an hour and a half to prepare Matt's dish. Matt, you will have an hour and 15 minutes. Your time starts now. Good luck. <laughs> Justine's been flying high lately. She's like superstar girl. There's no reason why Justine can't pull it off. I was asked to come in and, and mentor a, a young budding chef. And, you know, that's all I really want to do. You know, if I win, what a bonus. First thing I do is measure the paper for my tart. I want this dish to be perfect, so my paper has to be perfect. Can I give you a tip? It yeah. doesn't really matter if it doesn't fit. <laughs> as long as there's puff pastry on it. She is very nervous, I could see that, you know. That really should have only been a 20 second job. First step is to roll out the pastry uh, to make sure it's thin enough and ready to go for the muzzy pan. You should be asking more questions. Okay, is that thick enough? Yeah, not far off. And you're a little bit uneven there. Feel that on top of that? You've got thicker bits, you've got life bits, yeah? So lift it up and really nice and gentle, just... You're just really rolling it, yeah? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. All right, so that's fine. Leave it. Okay. Yep. Leave it, get started on the marzipan, the egg white, the slicing of the pear, then straight after that, get your caramel on. Okay. Justine, you've just had a 15-minute head start. Matt, it's now time to start cooking. You know, to be honest, I couldn't wait to get stuck into it. I'll see you in an hour. Okay. <laughs> puts five things on to do at once. These chefs, they don't even measure stuff. They just throw stuff in pots and get on with it. I dare say it took Matt the best part of three minutes to catch up to Justine. Justine, I'm going to give you encouragement. Oh, OK. Hurry up. I'm, I'm actually feeling a bit nervous now. I know I'm not the best dessert cook. I have one hour to do another five elements. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this dish up in time because it looks bloody hard. The dish that I've chosen for today's challenge is a warm pear tart with a poached pear and a caramel sauce. Justine and Matt, you have one hour left. I had an hour left and I can hear pots and pans going and I could just sense the speed he was going at in comparison to what I was doing. At that stage, I was up to assembling the tart by putting on the marzipan. Um, do I put the marzipan all the way to the corners yep. of the pastry? Right over the whole lot. The whole really lot. important. Next step was to cut the pears nice and thin so they're ready for the tart. It was just taking me forever. <laughs> How are you going, Justine? Oh, assembling my tart. The huge difference between the two pear tarts. Matt, he slices them really thinly. He squares up his pears, he makes them all the same size, and then he just sort of lays them down in a fan and, and transfers them to his tray, whereas Jazzy chops them up and she's laying them down singly. I'm a bit worried because the presentation of it and um, the accuracy of the pears when you put it on that puff pastry is extremely important. I really want to make that perfect because when you cut that slice at the end, the judges will notice if it's perfect or not. They have to overlap, don't they, the pears? They do, yes. I've just put my pear tart in the oven. I haven't even started to do the caramel, and I still have at least four processes to go. How's that caramel going, Justine? I've just started it now. Good. You need to be multitasking. OK. So much to do for a little time. Is that looking too dark? It's hard to tell until you actually taste it because it's the sweetness and the bitterness, but the, the colour looks good, yeah? 
at this stage I'm doing the crumble and measuring out everything perfectly because you want to have that evenness between the sugar, the flour and the butter to make it nice and crunchy and crumbly. Matt, can I do my crumble straight away and put it in the oven or should I just let it cool down in the fridge? Put it straight in the oven. We're running out of time. I know that Matt's finished majority of things. The pear needs to be poached. I prepared the liquid. A squeeze of lemon and just leave the half in there. Just leave the whole half in there. Put the pear in it, put some alfoil foil on top of it in order to submerge the pear to make sure that it's cooked evenly. He's literally finished nearly every component part of the dish. He's so in control, but he's a little bit gutsy as well. I hope she can catch up. I'm in the shit at the moment. What's really important with the tart is you actually bake it on the bottom to get the puff pastry cooked. Once that's cooked, you put a little bit of caramel on top and you actually flip it over just to let the bottom of it, the base of it, actually cook out a little bit because you don't want it to be undercooked. I open the oven and that pastry is not cooked at all. That looks, it looks a bit raw underneath, isn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it needs longer. Sorry. There's something wrong. I've maybe not put the temperature up high enough. I don't have time to waste, so Matt helps me and we just put it in his oven. I'm quietly observing. She took her tart out and left her crumble in the bottom of the oven. Major mistake. Oh, my gosh. I'm freaking out because I have so much more to do. Where are the other two? Three. I only did one, did you? How many did you do? Four. How come? Well, that's what the recipe says. Let's just hope no one else is coming for dinner. I don't have time to poach four pears. Um, I don't have time to call four pears. I just do one and hope for the best. It's a risk to only poach one pear. Of course it is. If it doesn't work out, then there's not a lot of time to do another one. Right. Yeah, I just want my tart to work. Justine and Matt, 15 minutes to go. 15 minutes to go, the tart's looking good. It's amazing. It just puffed up beautifully. I'm getting on the right track. This is working. I still have time to finish everything. Be careful, not too much. Yeah. Right, but I need to flip him over. While I was concentrating on my pear tart, because that was my little baby, I wanted to make that perfect. I just need the top. I kind of forgot about my crumble. Oh, my gosh. I was concentrating on my pear tart because that was my little baby. I wanted to make that perfect. I just need the top. I kind of forgot about my crumble. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. The crumbs are gone. Jazzy. God, my heart just sank for it. It was burnt to a cinder. It looked like ground coffee. I've got 10 minutes to go now, and I don't have any crumble. Quickly, do it again. Quick. I don't have time. I don't have time. She was struggling and everything started to snowball. Who's got to caramelise on the top? Got to got flip it hard. Yeah, I don't have time to flip it. Look, what Justine really needs is to get that pear tart right. She's going to be really pushed. Matt, should I flip it? Well, it will caramelise that way too, but flipping is better. All right, here we go. This is a, a make or break moment because if it cracks, it's finished. It's gone. come out it looks beautiful but you know what the crumbles burn I need crumble on that plate or else they're gonna know that that's mine and I failed my instincts were just get some more crumble on even if it doesn't work just I've got to try I didn't even measure I was just chucking some flour a bit of sugar a bit of butter a bit of ginger just get it in there as soon as I could I admired how Justine fell off the bike and got back on really quickly. You're going to get it on there. You're going to get it on there. Five minutes to go. Tart is ready, but I just need to let it cool a little bit because it's still quite puffy. I've pulled the crumble out of the oven. I'm happy with the way it looks. It was still extremely hot because I got it straight out of the oven. My cream's going to melt on it. Justine and Matt, you've got one minute to go. Go, Jazzy. 
I'm just waiting for the 30 second countdown and when it's about 10 seconds, I'm gonna put the dollop of cream. 30 seconds, guys. Just wait. Stand there and hold it until the last 10. 10 seconds to go. Very good. It's gonna melt straight away. I step away and I'm like, oh, thank God. I have every element on that plate. I'm so happy. And your time is up. Very good. How long have you been cooking? Not long. <laughs> Justine, your plate one. Please bring your dish forward. And Matt, that makes you plate two. I have to say, hers looked pretty good. And that's when I started to get a bit nervous, you know. I thought, you know, she can beat me quite easily. Now, the judges have absolutely no idea who cooked what dish. Both dishes will receive a total combined score out of 30. And the highest score will win. My dessert is being judged first, and I'm actually quite happy with it. The pastry's really, really well cooked. It's crisp, you know, it's toasty on the bottom. Nice caramelised, glossy, sweet pear on the top. It's excellent dessert. Very, very good dessert. If there's any negatives, a little bit crunchy on the pear and a little bit dry. If plate one is Justine's, that girl's got some serious talent. She's definitely a big contender in this competition. Fantastic caramel. Well, I think the crumble could be darker. It still has a crispness that's very attractive and adds another element to the dish. I know this girl is good, but of course I want to win. It's uh, pride and ego on the line here. The tart, even though it looks much better, plate number one may have had the edge for me in terms of just the flavour. The pear is definitely cooked more than plate one's, which is, you know, where it needs to be. It's just absolutely delightful. Um, caramel's very similar. Crumb, darker, more intricate in flavour. While there, there's beautifully cut pear across the top of the tart, it hasn't got quite the same crispness and lift that plate one had. Other than that, that's an impeccable dessert. I'm just waiting for the, the judges. It's nerve-wracking. I haven't been through that for a long time. After all the chaos in my kitchen, I just can't wait to hear what they have to say about my dish. Well, judges, I can now reveal that plate one was Justine. Matt, how did you score plate one? Seven out of ten. Oh. Great dish. The caramel, almost note for note, exactly what we tasted on Matt's dish. George, what did you think of Justine's dish? Eight out of ten. Ooh. You know, my criticism is the pear was a bit crunchy. Give you another day and you would have perfected that dish. Gary? I scored your dish. Wow. Nine out of ten. <laughs> She's got what it takes. She's a talented young girl. Now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Close to perfect. My dish is close to perfect. There are a couple of little pointers. The quenelle on the plate, yours was a blob. The crumbs weren't as toasty as I think they should have been. 
But you know what? Bloody brilliant. Well done. Justine's just scored 24 out of 30. There's a, a good chance that she might have nailed this challenge. Well, if Matt scores less than 24, that makes you the winner. Matt, what did you think of plate two? Nine out of ten. <laughs> Just the detail in the dish shows why you're so well regarded as a chef. I could have given you ten, but I know you prefer nine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. George, what did you give Matt's dish? A nine out of ten. I got a 9 out of 10 too, so there's still chance I'm not out of the game yet. Matt's scored 18 so far. For you to win, Gary now needs to give Matt's dish a score of 6 or less. So Gary, tell us your score and the winner of the challenge. Matt, I scored your dish. 10 out of 10. Oh, well done, Matt. Yeah. You did a really good job, Matt. A really good job. A really good job. I was very happy. I felt as though I should have been in the Olympics doing something, you know. Justine, not far. Not, not far at all. To, to do that in such a short amount of time and get those elements on the plate looking like that, I'd just, I'd take my hat off if I had one on. <laughs> yeah, incredible job, it really was. Congratulations, Matt Moran. It's a total score of 28 out of 30, which makes you the winner of our Celebrity Chef Challenge. Thank you. Matt, thank you so much for visiting us at MasterChef today. We wish you all the best. Cheers, guys. <laughs> you know, I've lost, but I've just had the most amazing experience cooking against Matt Moran. I'm very humble. For me, it's priceless. I'll never forget this day in my life. It's been a really long day for you. However, it's not over yet. Everyone, come on down. We've got a surprise for you. Let me introduce you to Andrea and Sean. In come a lovely man and lady together, and I'm thinking, what are we doing? Are we cooking them dinner? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, my God. Now, these guys are getting married. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> That's lovely. The six of you will be catering for that wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and the wedding is tomorrow. Fantastic. We're all just freaking out because it's less than 24 hours. The pressure's just ridiculous. A wedding. A wedding is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. We cannot screw this up. Tomorrow night, a special 90-minute MasterChef. This is going to be absolutely incredible. Our cooks face their biggest challenge yet. It's going to be the, the most nuts one we've had so far. The final six work through the night in a test of endurance. Who doesn't have their wedding cake organised the day before their wedding? As they attempt to stage the perfect wedding. Let's go. Come on, you can do it. I've really got to get these guys organised or we're going to be screwed. I know you're all working individually, but at the end of the day, there's a wedding upstairs and we need to feed them, OK? If Chris gets credit for this, I will be really, really upset. Watch exclusive interviews with celebrity chefs and get all the latest news only at masterchef.com.au.